Hey guys, welcome back to Flatpak Effects. In this video, I'm gonna break down Ben TK's Philippines video from the point of view of an After Effects user. So let's dive in and have a look. Now the first thing I really notice about this intro is that it's not his standard sort of intro, it's something a little bit different. And I really like how he's being sucked into the globe here and then he's been transported to the destination. Now I'm not gonna break down this intro for you too much just because Ben TK has actually already done a video over on his channel and you can see that he's used a lot of green screen elements where he's just basically picked things up with a green screen set up in the background and then he's just shot things like rotating around like all the different objects flying around the screen and then he's just simply layered them over the top. Then he's actually filmed himself playing through the different actions to actually get sucked into the portal. Now you can see there's actually a couple of effects going on here in the background and I would say that some of these would either be a combination of some of the products that you can get from somewhere like Red Giant and it could even be just something like Particular that is used to create these animated energy beams. Now here we actually cut to a shot of him on the beach as he flies out the portal. Now this could actually just be done in one shot. The shot that we're actually seeing here on screen at the moment is probably where they put the camera to start with and just simply locked it off on a tripod, meaning they didn't move the camera or anything like that. And then all he's done is basically just stood off to the side here and then just basically done a dive straight into the sand to get that effect like he's been thrown out of the portal. Now then the way you actually get rid of him is to actually draw a simple mask and remove him from this shot. So they could have just simply drawn a mask around here and then just painted in the background using the clone stamp just to get rid of him out of that shot. And then again over the top, we're just using a program like one of Red Giant's plugins to actually create all the little beam effects and these lightning bolts here. And it's actually done really, really well. It comes together really nice and clean for the final shot. And then here we just cut to a simple drone shot as we're actually pulling back to reveal what looks like 3D text. Now at first it actually looks like 3D text and if you wanted to create proper 3D text inside of After Effects, you could simply do, do that using a program like Element 3D which is free to download and you can actually just type in your text and then you use the extrude feature. But actually, if you look a little bit closer here, they're actually using two flat layers. So they're both two dimensional layers. And you can see that what they've actually cleverly done, you can see it actually here, they've put these straight sort of horizontal lines through the background and it makes it look like it has a three dimensional background. But if you actually look really closely here, you can see a gap in between these two where you've got the front layer and then you've got the back layer. And that's because the back layer is actually just a flat image. There's actually not, no depth in between. And I actually had to look once or twice just to actually pick up what they were actually doing there. So good job on that. So straight away in this video, we're starting to see those fluid camera movements that Ben TK loves to use in all of his videos. And he does them really, really well. They're actually really difficult to recreate these. And the only way to really film them properly is with a gimbal. So you need to use a gimbal if you're gonna shoot videos exactly like this and again we see a lot of that speed ramping effect and is using really clever transitions and I was talking about that in one of my previous videos where you want to use objects and actually pan up behind them because it gives you a really good cutting point so you can see right here he does a really good job where he's actually masked the edge of that handlebar as it comes into our shot and then it pans up but when we actually play through it it just looks like one seamless transition right the way through so it's just done with that real expert precision that gives that camera that really fluid fluid movement right through his entire video. Now another thing you'll notice is that he uses a lot of close-ups mixed in with a few wide shots. Two really big things in cinematic videos are close-ups and angles. Now if you shoot a lot of close-ups it just gives your video a lot more of a cinematic look because the camera is constantly moving around giving you a lot more options in the editing room. So you can see this whole sequence just looks a lot tighter having those close-ups and all those angles. Now you can see here he's actually rotating the camera as a really effective transition. So as he's rotating out on one shot, he's rotating in on the other. And that's really covered with a lot of motion blur just to help really sell that effect. So you can see here as well, he's got these two shots of going from the kayaker then to this rock and then up to these people here. And this is actually two separate shots. So he's got one shot here and then transitions into his second shot here, which is a close up of this rock. And then he simply just moved the camera then up to these people. It's something you just have to watch a few times just to see actually how well 
it's actually edited together and how seamless that transition actually is. Now here he's actually just using part of a warp zoom transition and all he's done is he's actually just dialed back that effect so he hasn't used the complete warp transition he's actually just kind of used just part of it. Then you can see we got this shot of the coconut actually falling down onto the ground. Now most likely the way he's actually done this is you can see that he's actually just filmed one shot of the tree here and you can see here very clearly that it's got a digital zoom on it as it's transitioning in from the last shot. He's then kind of got the camera panning down and then we get a straight cut onto the ground here as the coconut actually hits. Now on the way down, you can see that we've got this rotating coconut. And you can see here, if you look really closely, you can actually see where someone's actually holding the coconut here and then actually rotating it on a separate shot as it falls down. So they would have done that in a second shot and then actually masked out that coconut and then overlaid it over the top. Now again, you have to watch that a few times to really pick that up, just because it's done really seamlessly and the effect looks really, really good. Now this next shot I really, really love, which is actually as the camera actually transitions through this motorbike engine exhaust. Now this shot here, he's got one particular shot as it pans down at the start, and then he's got the light actually dimming up and down. And this just would have simply been done with a mask over the top with a bit of a feather around the edge. And then just using a bit of color grading, he's actually just turned the levels up and down. Then the camera actually continues to transition down in one shot. And then you can see it actually transitions into this tunnel. Now this tunnel here is most definitely just a basic 3D tunnel with this sort of corrugated sort of texture over the top. And then we've got an explosion overlay over the top where we're actually getting the engine sort of ignite and then the exhaust rushing out, and that's just one shot on its own. Then that's intercut with the start of a new shot here where he's actually panning out to a wide, as then the guy's actually taking off on the motorbike. We've then got a lot of those speed ramping shots mixed in with a few drone shots here. And again, then we've got a lot of those close-ups. We've even got this shot here of the binoculars where he's actually really cleverly masked the lenses and then overlaid some different video on them. And you can see that we've actually got two different shots here overlaid over the lenses. Again, a really nice effect. I also really like these shots here where you've got perspective shots. So you've got this shot here where you can actually see the girl looking at something, but then you've also got this behind shot where you've got these two guys standing in it and you can actually kind of see from their perspective, but it's kind of there in the shot. And I find just having that person in the shot there really adds another level of emotion or curiosity to our shots and really helps draw the viewer in because at the end of the day, you want to create that emotional connection from the viewer to what they're actually seeing on screen. And then we've got a really nice drone reverse shot here coming back through the trees and then it transitions up into the airplane here. So a really nice transition there. And then again, we're back into the action. Now you'll notice with pacing as well, when you listen to the music, it's really important to get that pacing right. So as he's actually panning the camera back, we do that quite quickly. Then we're panning up into the airplane where we slow it right down. So we go through that really fast action to then slow the video down. And then we're straight back with a new transition and then straight back into the action where then we have a lot of those fast cuts again. Now this is a really good example of where you wanna start cutting to the actual beat of the song that you're using. And I've actually got a video coming up where we're gonna talk exactly about that, of how we actually use music to determine how we're gonna cut our video, because that is a skill that you really wanna learn if you wanna be a professional video editor. Now the next shot, there's a few things actually going on here, but we've got this shot of this prey mantis sitting on someone's finger. And that's actually one shot that then they've masked around the edge and you can see where they've done a little bit of edge feathering. And then they've actually just enlarged that over the top of another drone shot here, which then flies through this mountain and then through this tunnel. And then we go through another shot of another hill to then reveal this final hill here. So that's just using some drone footage mixed in with a few sort of zoom transitions to get that effect. Then we have a really nice sequence here of the close up of this girl's eye. And you can see here at the start, so she's obviously holding some sort of fan that they've kind of just put in front of the camera and then dropped it down to reveal her eye. And then they cut into a second shot, which is an even tighter shot of the eye here. And then they've used one of those warp transition things over the top. Now I already have a video on how to actually do that sort of warp heat effect over something. And then 
Over that, they've masked out the eye and overlaid some different videos here. And then it looks like some sort of colorizing over the top as a transition for the different shots here. And then at the end, we've got the camera transitioning again behind that fan to transition out of that sequence. Now this next part, we transition down onto a tattoo and then the plane sort of takes off from the arm and then flies over to the book that he's reading. And that's a really clever transition there. So just breaking that down, you can see we have one shot panning down onto the tattoo here, which has then actually got the compass animating on the guy's arm. And that's just a simple matter of using masks there over the top to cut out that little hand on the compass and then just use a rotation to actually rotate it around. You also have to use the, the sort of blending or the clone tool there to get rid of it before you start spinning that dial. Then over here, the camera pulls over to this little plane. So you can see as the plane actually takes off, they've removed what was on the skin before just by using the smudge tool or the clone stamp in Photoshop. And then they've taken that plane and then actually turned it into a 3D layer and then just animated it like a plane flying through their scene. And then as it transitions around, the plane flies down here onto the paper to then land as the camera then transitions down behind. So a really clean and clever way of using simple techniques to really get a really big impact. Now at the end of the video, we see Ben TK actually being disintegrated away into the wind. Now the only way to really do this properly, and when I say properly, I mean to actually get those proper sort of fluid movements to make it look like it's moving through a 3D space is with Particular. This is something that's really easy with Particular because it's designed to do exactly that. It creates those sort of 3D movements, but it does it in a 2D environment. That's the beauty of Particular. You don't have to use it in a 3D program to get those sort of 3D movements. So he's just using that disintegration effect where he would have basically masked himself out here and he could have used something like the content aware feature built into After Effects to actually remove himself out to get a clean plate. He's then drag and drop basically particular over the top and then used that particle effect over the top to make it look like he's disintegrating into the shot. So there you go, there's my breakdown of Ben TK's Philippines video. A big shout out to Ben TK for creating just amazing content. You can check out his channel if you haven't already Ready, and he's got a bunch of videos just like this one. So I hope you learned something in this video. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can also check out more videos over at flatpackeffects.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.